Hi, today I'm here to show you how to sketch this um, beautiful little window in watercolours. This is what I did in my sketchbook a few um, months back and I'm going to start off by talking about all the materials that we need and then we can move on to sketching. So for the materials we need a watercolour paper or a sketchbook if that's what you're comfortable using um, so I have a moleskin sketchbook here I like uh, the thickness of the paper which is great for watercolor if not you can also have a normal watercolor sheet this is um, watercolor paper 300 gsm and this paper is um, Saunders Waterford with the watercolor paint you can either use watercolor paint from uh, tubes or pans completely up to you um, I have it out like this in my palette and you just need one brush this is a round pointed brush it's a Chinese brush medium sized if not you can always use a medium sized round pointed brush which could be size 12 or 10 this is size 10 if you're doing a smaller sketch you can always go down to size 8 as well as the watercolour paint brushes and the paper, you also need a jar of water and some tissues to dab extra paint or lift out paint, etc. The um, reference picture that I'm using today is from unsplash.com. Um, I will share the link to the image in the descriptions below. Okay, so this is the paper that I'm going to use. And I'm going to start off with a very rough pencil line. So looking at the picture again, we know that the balcony that we're looking at is at an angle and we're looking at the balcony from below. So we can see a lot more of the underside of the balcony than the balcony itself. So let's start with the door. You can see that the door is slanting. So I'm going to make a rough line, slanting line. And a line down. So that is going to be the balcony opening or the door. They have bright blue shutters. So I'm going to make a mark there. The top of the shuttered opening is going to be parallel to the top of the balcony door and a line down. I'm going to add some depth to the door. So that's the inside. We can see the underside of the balcony. So I'm going to slant these lines upwards. So that's the side, that's the front, and that is going to be the underside of the balcony. So I'm going to do another line here like that for the little pillar. We can see at the beginning of a pillar over there. Now let's build everything else on top here. So the, the floor of the balcony itself is quite thick as you can see from the picture. So I'm going to make like a couple of layers there. And you can see all these lines are parallel to each other. There are some potted plants on top here. And then just making a very rough sketch so I know where the potted plants are. Very rough sketch for the foliage, just marking them so I know where they are. So that's, that's the handrail. So just making a line for the handrail as well. So let's add a little bit of details of the shutters here. So making those lines of the wooden planks.
so just adding a few scribbles for foliage and now let's start painting okay I'm going to start by preparing the paint I've soaked my paint pans so they're nice and moist I've also prepared a little bit of pigments that I need so I'm using a little bit of um, Indian red for the pots some raw umber for um, the walls around the balcony that's a very light wash I've got um, aqua green for the shutters and then you can use a little bit of green or yellow for the foliage as well so I'm going to start off by wetting the paper I'm going to try and avoid the shutters okay once I've wetted that I'm going to go into some raw umber and then begin to do like a quick wash you can also make these little marks like this to show details of brick you can add a little bit of um, raw umber and maybe a darker shade of blue like Prussian blue or indanthrene blue get like a darker shade to add some details of bricks now let's move on to the blue shutters or I'm using aqua green here if you like it a bit more blue you can always use cobalt blue mix it with a little bit of yellow and get the kind of blue that you personally prefer so I'm going to try and mix a little bit of cobalt blue into this aqua green I'm starting off with a watery wash so adding a bit of water into my mixture I'm going to start painting it it doesn't matter if the color goes into the um, wet area around it I'm trying to keep it quite watery and now I'm going to start adding a bit of green for the foliage while this is still wet so for green you can use any green like sap green um, for your foliage or you can mix something of your own I am mixing something of my own using Windsor blue and Windsor yellow and I'll add a little bit of indanthrene blue or a deep blue for deeper shades as well so starting off with a very bright green and also a mixture of yellow as well keeping it quite loose and soft getting them to bleed into the blue as well and again I'm using the tip of my brush just to scribble and here I'm going to make it really wild large brush strokes very loose you can even splatter okay now let's add some deeper green to it so I'm using indanthrene blue bit of Windsor yellow we've got a deep green now I can add that in just at the bottom of those foliage just to show deeper color there you can um, take out excess water from your brush and try and do the same using a bit more pigment and less water so the same indanthrene blue and Windsor yellow this time the pigment is quite thicker and I'm going to use that to gently dab in some more pigment 
If you think your wash is too wet, you can wait a little bit before you add this. While it's still wet, I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to use some Indian Red. So again, I don't need a lot of water. I've got enough water there. So I'm going to use some Indian Red straight from the pan and I'm going to start by painting. You can see that the green is bleeding into the brown or the Indian Red, which is okay. So I don't want the whole thing to be a puddle, so I'm going to try and leave a little bit of white unpainted area as well. It doesn't matter if it touches slightly. In fact, it kind of, it's more beautiful that way for the colors to bleed into each other. Take out a little bit of water from the brush using a tissue and then slightly lift out some pigment. So dab your brush onto a tissue, just gently run it across like that. You can lift out some pigment. Now I'm going to finish off this green here at the corner as well. Okay, now let's work on the underside of the balcony as well. Moving on to some raw umber again. Very light wash and also leaving a lot of white areas. That's the underside which is going to be slightly darker so I'm going to use raw umber with a little bit of indanthrin blue. There's some foliage here as well where the pillar is, so let's get some blue. So I'm using the deeper blue this time, indanthrin blue, with some Windsor yellow, and then just slightly adding a few dabs just to indicate foliage. Not going to work too much here, just finishing it off with a few dabs here. Okay, so that's the first layer done. I'd like this to dry completely, so I'm going to wait for it to dry. Starting off the second layer and I'm going to use um, a thinner brush. The first brush that I used was this. Let me start using a smaller brush for finer details and this one is a size 8. And I'm going to start from the darker areas here. Of the balcony so before I start I'm going to get my pencil out and add some extra lines for details so I don't paint everywhere just going to add a few lines to show details of the window there So now that I have these lines, I'll try and stay inside these lines, try to leave like a little border. It's not always easy with um, watercolors or with a brush. For the darker color inside, I'm going to use um, indanthrin blue, which is like a very deep blue. And a little bit of permanent red so it becomes more like a deep purplish grey. And I'm starting off using the tip of my brush. Now let's leave a little bit of a border there and then start off with the bottom bit of that balcony door. And here I don't want to paint in completely because I like to leave a little bit of unpainted areas 
just to show the impression of foliage which is in front of the balcony so um, again using the tip of my brush I'm just lazily stippling like that leaving a lot of white or unpainted area it's not white it's got um, color in the background but I don't want to add a lot of deep color there that's where the window stops and then dabbing in some pigment I'd like to add a little bit of deeper color for the foliage as well I'm using the same indanthrene blue or the mixture that we've been using right now with a little bit of if you do have green you can use green or you can just mix a little bit of yellow with it to get some deep green and um, and then you can start adding some details like that and then getting some more um, water on my brush lightening out the wash as I go away from the focus I'm going back into some Indian red or Venetian red for the planters which you can see here I'm going to try and add a little bit of details just a few lines and dots and dashes and you can also add some deep blue I'm using indanthrene blue if you do not have that you can use Prussian blue or indigo mixed with um, the Indian red to add some deeper color just adding a little bit of deeper color here and there okay now I'm going to add some details for these shutter openings so let's go back into the aqua green or the color that you have been using and uh, I'm going to add a tiny bit of permanent red with the aqua green because it creates a very beautiful shadow color so just adding a little bit of shadow for the corner of that shutter a few lines so usually I would do this with my pen but today I'm just giving it a go with the brush so um adding a few deeper lines here and now some details for the shutters okay, just going to tilt my painting slightly to add some details of shutters so that's one shutter done I might tilt it slightly to add some lines here as well. So if you would like more control over your lines using a brush, because that's not easy, what I do is I lay my palm down like that, rest my hand over it, and that gives me more control. So that way I can add some details without wobbly hands. Now for some details for the inside of this balcony, going back into my raw umber, just gently darkening those areas like that. Maybe using a little bit of um, Indian red as well. And you can use the same color to um, add a little bit of details here as well now let's get some color like red or permanent rose one of these colors for some splatters just to show um, flowers so I'm not going to go into the details of adding flowers all I'm gonna do is splatter it like this and now let's work a little bit here 
that's not our focus but um, I'm still going to add like a little bit of deeper color here just um, so that I can see um, a little bit of foliage details here so I'm going to use Indian red and the same um, blue that I have been using here because it gives me a very nice gray shadow and because I like to keep my palette very limited I'm going to use that for an extra layer of shadow here so maybe add some creepers going along the edge of the balcony here and now finally the handrail and using a very deep grayish purple color or any neutral color is fine or you can even use pen at this stage um, so let's add a line might add a little bit of uh, white gouache just for a few highlights just a few um, lines here and there just for some highlights 